I'm Appie Slijs, hosting yet another final episode of PNN. This time reporting from Paris, the city of love. We could no longer ignore all the requests, the fan mail and even love letters. So here we are reporting to update you on the Pete expedition. It's been two years since IODP roamed the equatorial Pacific. So why are all peat scientists here gathered together in Paris? Let's find out, but only on PNN. Live from Paris, this is PNN. For those who don't know me, my name is Catherine Beltran. I'm proud to welcome you in my university, which is called Pierre et Marie Curie. Well, the scientists uh, gather here in uh, Paris about two years after the expedition to get together and share the results of the research they've been doing for the last two years since the cruise with all the samples and data they walked off to the ship with. Since we've been off the expedition, many of the scientists have gone back to their home institutions and worked in small groups on the, their particular research project. However, each of the different projects that the scientist is doing is not an individual effort in, in all respects. And so we get every, all the scientists together so they can start seeing how their research and their results combined with the other ones really answer the stories that we're, we're trying to figure out. It's uh, welcome everybody. It's great to see um, this great group of uh, scientists. So the last time we all met together as a science uh, party was uh, in College Station. I think it was in October 2009, if I remember correctly. And uh, since then, people have started a number of different uh, things. They have started to apply for funding to actually do their science. They have uh, started working on their uh, samples. And so what we see today is the first time that the two science parties really meet again and have the chance to discuss uh, some of their first results. And so I think it's really exciting to see the different poster contributions and also see the uh, different uh, projects at different stages of completion. Different grain size signal within the squiggly lines and then whether there's periodicities within that, of course. I mean, we have the meeting to do two things. One is, is to make sure that scientists know what other scientists are doing, but also we're getting together to plan the publications that will be presented in the journal articles. It's very difficult. We have a group of 70 scientists and they all do their individual projects. And for us, particularly as co-chiefs, it will be still the task to try to coordinate this research. So to make sure that all the gaps are covered and that there's not uh, duplication of effort on the one hand. And also to really link into the bigger picture of how these different little facets of knowledge that we, that we gather from the records, how they all fit together into a uh, much bigger uh, picture. So these are the, the planktic foreground zones, and these are events, so this, uh, these areas are... Um, and eventually this will all come out in publications, that's the official form for us to communicate these results uh, to the outside world, if you like. Um, and that's, that will be a process that will, be, that will continue for the next uh, few years, or even decades, I think. You know, the lower part might be 0.05 percent organic carbon. That'll yes. take care of this project. However, this has been an effort that's been going on for many decades of people trying to understand the evolution of climate in the equatorial Pacific region and also in global climate. And so this is just one part. Uh, the scientists, I've already heard scientists talking about what next places they should be drilling in the equatorial Pacific to help further and understand the climate of the Earth. Um, what's also nice is that we have a number of newcomers to the science party. So many uh, PhD projects are based on the uh, amazing samples we got from the uh, Pacific. And so they, for some people, they will have just worked now for a few days or a few months uh, on that project. And they get introduced to the more senior scientists and also to the bigger picture problem of the expedition. And so they are now also becoming integrated into this, this effort. One of the major things we're trying to do is to raise the next generation of scientists to carry on. Uh, so we have many scientists here who are 
graduate students uh, who are either participating in the expedition or a lot of graduate students who weren't on the ship but are, are working for people who are on the ship and they're working towards getting their PhDs and starting their careers. These are the people who in another 5, 10, 15 years will be the ones who will be leading these expeditions. So how did you get involved in the program? Well, I think it's great that this program allows uh, scientists to participate at a really early stage. So for example, many PhD students will work on samples that are obtained by the program and they will be involved in meetings like this where they meet uh, the more experienced uh, scientists. And um, I mean, we have a set of examples like Api Slaus, uh, for example, who sailed already as an undergraduate student uh, on the ship. And so at that stage, people learn how to get involved in these bigger uh, corporations. And uh, I've talked to a few young people and they've already got great ideas now, which I think they'll probably put into some additional uh, applications for, for future expeditions. So I think it's quite easy to get into this program. Um, there's always this nice mix of uh, junior and senior uh, people. And people learn from each other. The young people learn from the more experienced ones and the, the older ones uh, um, get motivated by the enthusiasm of the, of the young ones. We are currently on the Joyness Resolution, the drill ship of the Integrated Ocean Drilling Program. Scientists are very good at talking to other scientists and explaining what they're doing, but we're not always very good at explaining to our family members, our friends, about what we do. And, and I think it's, um, I had a girlfriend in college who one time said, Adam, I, you know, I'll listen to you talk about geology, but you know, most other people don't want to hear that. And I think you know, they get bored with that sometimes, and I think it's really important to figure out how to communicate the interesting things we're doing and the important things we're doing in ways that people can understand and enjoy to watch and are, and are engaging. And I think um, with PNN and other sorts of efforts that people have been doing to try to engage uh, non-scientists and, and to catch their attention. You guys have quite the knack. You always seem to know when it's time. You look up and see we're doing 11 knots and that, that's when you want a drilling update, right? You... Thank you, Mike, for this fascinating yeah, drilling update. <laughs> get them to listen for 10, 15 minutes and, and get a few really important concepts about what we're trying to investigate and the importance of it, really helps broaden that message. And I, I think that's really important um, for what we're trying to do, which is try to understand how the Earth works and how it impacts us as humans. Thank you everybody for this fascinating update. I'm Api Slice. Thanks everybody for this fascinating update. This was the final, the very final episode final PNN. So I shall be no more. But remember, the beat will go on. For you. But no more PNN. Cheers. 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 PNN. Only on PNN. Is the mic still on, man? I think so.